Claire, take us through the, uh, the fact of this case. What exactly is he accused of? Well, just to give you a bit of context on the case itself. So, the man, the attacker, who was actually in the police officer's house that night, he was killed by police when they raided the property. The two people who were killed, two police officers, Jessica Schneider and Jean-Baptiste Salvin, they worked in the nearby police station, and their son, their three-year-old son, was in the house when the attacker was, Lorossi Abilal was his name, when he stabbed them to death in front of their three-year-old son. So this really was a case that shook the police force here in France. Two police officers attacked, targeted in their home. So the attack himself was, was killed that night when police raided the property and saved the three-year-old son who'd been under hostage. The man on trial today... Lamin Abirouz, he was a friend of the attacker and his DNA was found on the computer in the couple's home. And that was the computer that the attacker, Lorossi Abilal, he used to go on Facebook Live on the night of the attack and broadcast to anyone who was watching what he had done, the fact that he had just killed two police officers. The Islamic State group quickly claimed responsibility for the attack. Now, in terms of his defence, Lamin Abirouz was on trial today. He says that he was at home that night, apart from when he went to the mosque to pray. His lawyers say that a simple DNA transfer could have taken place. So if he had seen his friend, the attacker, earlier that day, for instance, or earlier that week, and they had come into close contact, that's how his DNA may have ended up on the computer. And Claire, as you mentioned just there, there is a lot of uh, fascination with the fact that this, um, this double murder was committed in front of the couple's three-year-old son at the time. Do we know how that then three-year-old boy is doing now? He's ten years old now. He's living with his aunt, so the sister of his deceased father and his cousins near his grandparents. Uh, his, the lawyer for the family say that he's surrounded by love, people who care about him and that he is doing well. He sees a psychologist regularly who is making sure that he is continuing to do well as an orphan now, of course. And really, I can't state enough how this really shook the police force here in France. This couple were targeted in their home. It was, it was almost like the police came to the conclusion that they weren't just going to be targeted when they were out on patrol or on the job, but actually in their home in front of their children, they could be targeted. This, of course, came in the context. It was in 2016. A wave of terrorist attacks were taking place in France. We had had Charlie Hebdo in the, in the Jewish supermarket at the beginning of 2015. We'd had, of course, the Bataclan attacks at the end in November 2015. This was just before the Nice attack in July 2016. This attack took place in June 2016. So this really was a very tense time in France, but this was the first time we saw a police family targeted in their home. Claire Pacana reporting live there from central Paris. Thank you very much indeed.